before we start booking the episode, I'd like you to read something. Guess who's back? Ring of Honor. Why did you... Okay, never mind. Um, anyway. They're coming back to the Wednesday night... Uh, Saturday Night Wars. Ring of Honor Wrestling's back, this time on ESPN. All I have to say, Ring of Honor, bring it on. We're ready for you. The Saturday Night Wars are back. Thanks, Ring of Honor, for making the last video's uh, description and thumbnail look retarded. But anyway, we have El Generico in the ring. He has to vacate the tag titles due to what Walter did to his tag team teammate last week. He will get revenge on Walter and Imperium. But that'll take time. First off, he has to vacate his tag titles. He says Kevin can't be here tonight because he's in hospital dealing with the severe injuries he got. So, yeah, 77, great way to start the show from Elgin. Sad that we have to start it with him vacating the title because of Walter, but still great nonetheless. Then we have him in a 79. Holy shit, what a match. He defeats Kenny Omega with a 450 slash. Kenny got a 58, which is which is respectable, but an 86 from El Generico. Holy shit, a 79 is great. It's like, surely, I think it's our second best ever singles match behind the El Generico Kevin Steen match. So yeah, wow. That was... That was amazing from El Generico and Kenny Omega. Then we have Zack Sabre Jr. defending his TV title against Joey Ryan. He gets a 58, 58 for his performance. Joey Ryan was a little off his game. That's why he got like 39. Joey used to get to the mid-40s. But that's okay. Great match for the uh, for a TV title match at least. Good job from Zack Sabre Jr. there. Then we have Tony Schiavone. He's on commentary. He says how the next match between Imperium and the EWA will be for the, the vacant tag titles. Let me go to that, which gives us 65, which is solid. Not quite the levels that the tag titles were having with El Generic and Steve, but that's okay. Um, the Kings of Wrestling will win the World Tag Team titles, that being Claudio Castagnoli and Chris Hero. So, yeah, good match there. Claudio and Chris hard carry them, I should get 65. So, yeah, EWA uh, have two of the titles now the TV title and the tag titles. We have Omega accidentally doing double duty. Um, better performance this time against any, gets, but he loses twice in one night. Okay. Um, my bad. But, uh, yeah, he loses Carl O'Reilly. And for some reason, decided to do two matches in one night. That's okay, because we see the lifeblood of a 70. The lifeblood got a 70 rated match. I mean, Matt Hardy's great on it, but like, they pulled a 70 rated match out of Player Uno and Player Dose. I mean, yeah, Player Uno got 65, Player Dose got like a 42. Blood down. So, well, that's a great match. <laughs> A 70 for a 6 man tag is very nice. We have the lifeblood going over the likes of Matt Hardy, Play Uno, and Play Dose. Just to continue the lifeblood's momentum. You know, last week they said they were being underutilized, that they should be the one with all these opportunities. And then this week they didn't even get a shot at the vacant tag titles. So the Young Bucks just a little upset. And Matt will boost his psychology, which is much needed, considering it's a Young Bucks match. And we have Walter. You know, we, we see a uh, vignette uh, well, from like earlier. Well, I think it's a live class. You know, Kevin Steen, he's at his hospital room. You know, he has presents from his family, his friends. And then we see, as the doctor walks out, Walter appears from the shadows. And he says, Kevin, I had to make an example out of you. That's the only reason why I trust you. But, um,. You see, I can't be allowing you to come back very soon. Because I have plans, Kevin. You see. So, I'm sorry. This means I will have to hurt you. And then, well, the camera cuts away. But we can hear the screams of Kevin Steen. Uh, we can only imagine. 
the demonic axe and tank that can be the big Moving on, we have Roger Strong pulling a 50 out of Amazing Road. Their ke chemistry was pretty bad, that's why they only got a 50. Roddy usually gets mid 60s, he got up to 49. That's okay. Uh, Alright, mid card match. We have Adam Cole, he says, Look, I love the industry there. They're my boys. Kyle and Roddy, Roddy have been there for me for a while now. But I want to do this alone. I want to take on Hernandez by myself. I hope you all can understand. Will Adam Cole be able to retain his title without the help of his buddies? He does. And because of horrendous psychology, it gets a 48. Oh, no, 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 no. What? I'm about a 63. I know it's got a 60. That should go like mid 60s, but no. Because of psychology, it's a 48. That means the overall show rating is only 60. Um, I'm guessing that ring won't beat us this week after that. Well, after that, very. Very bad episode. I don't have high hopes. We have 115,000 viewers and a 60 rating. What did Ringo want to hit? Well, they blew us out of the wall. Not only did they get 464,000 viewers, they had a 67 show rating. God damn. Ring of Honor, they definitely win this week at Saturday Night Wars, that's for sure. We look to bounce back this week. Yes, bring him on up. And we start with the debut of Montel of Ontavius Porter. You know Porter? He's travelled the globe. He used to be in the Big Fed. He's the current IWGP Intercontinental Champion. And he wants PWG's TV title. You know Zach has a couple world titles over in Europe with German Stampede and WXW. But that's nothing to what he has. Montel is by far the best athlete. Nate, the most valuable athlete in this company. His MVP going to go poor, which is ironic. And we see the match got a 66, which is great. That's what we like to see. Zack Sabre got a 68. Montel, Montelius Porter got a 64. Zach does get the win by pinfall. That's his third defense of the title. You know, oh, I don't like it. Like he, Zach Sabre Jr., right? He has no pop. None whatsoever. But he puts on such good matches. So when he gets popular, he's going to be so good. But we just have to, like, get him popular. But that's okay. We then have Hernandez and Kenny Omega defeating the Undisputed Era team of Kyle O'Reilly and Richard Strong with a 73. That's what we like to see. We need those kind of matches if we want to beat Ring of We need a bounce back from last week. But yeah, a really good match. It progresses the Kenny Omega and Hernandez versus Undisputed Era storyline. You know, Hernandez, he came up short in that horrible main event last week. You will not talk about. But that's okay, as he bounces back with a win after Kenny Omega hit Carl Riley with an Al Shudo. We have Tommy End winning the debuting Abyss against a 49. Neither of them are that great. I mean, Abyss is just here for popularity to keep people over. He got 58, which is reasonable, I guess. We have a win for Imperium. Then we have the Lifeblood cutting a promo. They really are, like, at the brink of being overlooked, you know. They might just go and beat up Kevin Steve, because that's how Imperium got attention. They just gave, put someone in the hospital. Maybe they'll go beat up the Rock Ness Monsters or something next week. You know, they just, they know what, what they deserve. We then have a 58 when Marty Scroll beats Matt Hardy with a graduation. Matt got a 61, I believe. Yes. And Marty got a 47. Match was a little short, but that's okay. Just, again, trying to get Marty more over. He's not as good as Zach, but he's the same kind of predicament. Where he'll be a good hand if he, and in the case of Zach, a really good hand. If they just were more over, they're still unimportant. Be a good match there. We like to see. Well, and have the Young Bucks having a 74 rating with Super Smash Bros. Maybe the Super Smash Bros are good, you know. I mean, we're not 71. 
No man. But still, 71 is still really good. Matt, hit player dose with a worst case scenario. Player dose is the weak link of the Super Smash Bros. But, oh well. Really good match though. Then the Kings of Wrestling. They say that they watched, they just saw the Young Bucks and the match. And they're like, you know what? It's on. Next week, the Young Bucks can face the Kings of Wrestling in the main event. They keep saying how oh, Lifeblood's been overlooked. Well, here's their opportunity. They want to earn an opportunity? They can come in. Bring it on. Chris Hero beats Eugene with a death blow. And Claudio beats Go Shizaki with a recall bomb. 59 and 60 uh, each for the matches that the tag can attack. And then just more mid card matches to get people on the card. And uh, uh, Cesaro and Go was the scheduled main event. But then, as the show's about to go off air, Adam Cole comes out. He says how in a really good angle. He says he's the best. Like, it's plain and simple. He is the best. He's been this world champion for a long time now. He beat El Generico. He's been in Hernandez. Beat in the likes of Alex Shell. He's been in anyone that's come against him. The Imperium couldn't stop him. The EWA can't stop him. And he doubts anyone over at Lifeblood can stop him. And then he says, there's one man that's beat me. I don't wait. It was non-title. And he's the one I beat for this title. So, El Generico, since your buddy buddy Kevin is over in the hospital, how about you come lose to me and take a Panama Sunbox and then take me, baby? And well, I'm gonna call regrets that as in the main event in a 53 because there's no psychology. Adam calls really to piss me off with these bad main events, but luckily it would have been an exceptional match. It says, oops, would have been an exceptional match. El Genoco regains his title. We have a 59 rated show. Oh, oh, that's another loss. As we saw, despite uh, some good angles and two good matches, the main event from Adam Cole again letting us down in the against 59 and 123,000 viewers. Meanwhile, I already know we've lost, but Ring of Honor got a 70 and 479,000 viewers on ESPN. We're getting destroyed this month. I would say Ring of Honor is comfortably winning the Saturday Night Wars at the moment. 